In the beginning, there was water. That is what most of the creation myths tell us. These myths, these symbolic imaginings of early humans can still inform us today. They speak to a primal understanding of the importance of water. These myths speak both to the power and the ubiquity of water. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, the words from Genesis are this, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. An Egyptian Heliopolitan creation myth says, in the beginning, the sun god Atum, Amba Re, resided in Nun, the primordial ocean. An early Hindu myth is similar. At the beginning of time, Narayana lay floating on the primeval waters. After many ages, Narayana began to create the universe. Of course, this is also what scientists posit reported in an article in The Guardian earlier this year, saying they found evidence that Earth was covered by a global ocean, literally a water world, more than 30 billion years ago. A telltale, telltale chemical signatures were spotted in an ancient chunk of ocean crust, which points to a planet once devoid of continents. Water is powerful. We've all witnessed the power of water in the hurricanes we've recently experienced in the last several years. Water is healing and life-giving. Hopefully you've experienced the healing powers of water, a hot shower, a refreshing swim, a cool drink, or maybe at a meaningful water communion when we recognize that all water is one water. And each of us began in water. For nine months or thereabouts, we grow and develop in water. Our Shinnecock speaker today says that water is our first medicine. Water is a wisdom teacher. The Tao says, do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? The Tao also says, nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water. Yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. The soft overcomes the hard, the gentle overcomes the rigid. Everyone knows this is true, but few can put it into practice. So today we're gonna to watch a short 2019 TED Talk from Kelsey Leonard entitled, Why Lakes and Rivers Should Have the Same Rights as Humans. TED summarizes her talk this way, water is essential to life. Yet in the eyes of the law, it remains largely unprotected, leaving many communities without access to safe drinking water, says legal scholar Kelsey Leonard. In this powerful talk, she shows why granting lakes and rivers legal personhood, giving them the least same legal rights as humans is the first step to protecting our bodies of water and fundamentally transforming how we value this vital resource. This talk encompasses both the practical and the spiritual aspects of water. So it's a good place to start our conversation, exploring water, essential source, essential symbol. In the before times, when each of our congregations met in our sanctuaries at UUCG, we would spend about five to 10 minutes after watching a TED talk to share our thoughts and feelings. So we're gonna try that today for the first time virtually. When the TED talk ends, I'll break everyone into small groups for a brief time for the purpose of responding to what you've just heard. It won't, won't be long period of time, probably about five minutes. And then we'll come back together at the end of our service. And then again, should you choose to stay, we'll break into groups again for a more wide ranging conversation. Let's begin with Kelsey Leonard. 